So tonight it's gonna freeze and we're gonna end up covering these tomatoes, but I think for now, we're gonna go ahead and pick anything that is starting to be ripe, even if it's not fully ripe, and let them ripen inside the house in case it does kill back these plants. You wanna come help, Abby? Okay. Oh, you got one? Oh, that's very green. You can leave the green ones, all right? That's okay. You want to pick all these ones? But Dad, that doesn't have a top. It can... Oh, that's fine. We can pick all of these if you want. We'll just get rid of these plants. These ones are starting to die back anyway. Good job. Get them all. Abby's doing a great job picking them all. <laughs> I got two together. Yeah, it's fine. That's perfect. Now, it's only going to be, it says, 34 degrees, but it's hard to know 100%. I mean, that's only one degree, or two degrees away from full freezing. Good job, Abby. And then check this out, guys. We got we got this one, and that one's almost ready. Boy, it got a little bit cracked on top, but that's okay. It'll still be good. Yeah, it's so big. Yeah. That's a big tomato here. Well, look at that. Just from pretty much this bush only, or these three, we filled this. You got another? Get it. So this is a good example of why. Uh, last night it was 41 degrees, and we got some splitting on some of these. I now. One. You got another split? Okay. So uh, that can happen I'm when they're... I'm going to put it in my pocket. Okay. That can happen when they're really ripe um, and get splitting. And so that's why we're picking anything that's even remotely ripe, just to prevent that when it's cold. Well, guys, we are full. We got one purple Cherokee, which isn't quite ripe, but it's starting to. There's some color, and I just I want to make sure that it's, it's ready. We got a couple... Okay, great. So... And we got a couple of San Marzanos that aren't quite ready, but I want to make sure we get some. So there's our harvest. We're still picking a couple here and there. We're going to go ahead and harvest all this. I'm going to cut down these cabbage and see if I can salvage these. They got eaten quite a bit from bugs. We'll see what we can do here, but we're going to wipe this bed out. I'm going to cut everything off at the base and let the roots rot in the soil. I'm going to cover this with a tarp and let it sit for a month or two. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off all the bottom leaves and I'm gonna let those sit in the soil here, cover everything, it'll kind of rot in the ground and that'll give nutrients back to the soil. Let's see, so this variety I haven't harvested yet. It's a good looking cabbage. I'm a little worried because there's quite a bit of bugs, um, bug eaten off of it. We've got holes all throughout. But I might, see, there's a couple bugs right there. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. Was that your auntie? So, but we might be able to harvest this. I'll bring this inside, see if we can cut around the bug pressure. See if we can get something off of these too. I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna feed all these to the chickens since there was a lot of pests on there. Let the chickens eat all this. That'll be that'll be good for the chickens anyway. All the cabbage leaves, just grab them, throw them in with the chickens. Whoa. Love all the greens. They love eating all this stuff. Next thing we do is feed them all those big worm things. Yeah, if we find any worms, they're getting them off the leaves. You got another, Abby? Bring it, throw it in. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm gonna pull up these, the strip irrigation, and then we're gonna cover this with a tarp. Uh, yeah, let's do black side up. It'll make it nice, nice and warm over the winter, help break everything down. We got most of the corners here. Let's get the last one. Get it nice and tight. So all I'm doing is I'm taking these corners, uh, folding them in, kind of like wrapping a package and that holds it. No need for bricks or anything like that. Yeah, of course you want to get a tarp uh, large enough. So I was using some really thin tarps that I got for like 10 bucks, but they broke down real quick. I mean, they all got rips in them and the, the heat here, we get really bad summer heat and they rip and turn to, you know, you can see them all ripped down the center. There's a bunch of holes everywhere. They just got destroyed. So I bought some little better ones. Um, these are like $25, definitely more expensive, but hopefully they last. I'll, I'll be testing them out and see if they do. Almost ready 
for this cold spell, this light frost coming in. Now I know that most of like the cabbage and everything should be able to handle the frost, but that wasn't the point with this. We had to harvest this anyway. Basically it was a big harvest day. We got kale, we got cabbage, and then we were able to pick all the tomatoes, which my daughter's still finding a few here and there. If you have the time to let the roots sit, you know, cut the plants off at the root base and let those roots rot into the soil, do so if you've got the time. It really is beneficial to the soil because all that, all the roots are organic matter that have tilled up the soil for you. And once they break down, then it leaves that soil nice and airy and real good for your next year's planting. With the heat of the sun, hitting this and everything you're wiping out any kind of potential or at least lessening potential diseases for the next year and of course always do the safe thing and don't plant the same type of vegetable the very next year so next year i'm going to be planting tomatoes in this actually come spring and then the cabbage will not be here it'll be somewhere else but there we go so i'm all set we've got everything all ready for this light frost all these veggies here should be able to handle them lettuce and everything should be able to handle a light frost um, in fact, they can handle pretty cold temperatures, especially a quick light frost like we're having. It's not going to be, it's not going to be sustained. Definitely all these will. These are all root veggies. I've got carrots, I've got beets, I've got radish. All those should be able to handle even down to in the low 20s. So being 34, it says it should be fine. And then of course, daikon radish and turnip, they should be fine. Now I am worried about some of these potted plants, strawberries here. I've also got avocado which definitely cannot handle it i've got meyer lemons which actually of all the different citrus meyers tend to be kind of the most cold hardy but still being in a pot i have a feeling that they might not like a light freeze even so definitely not a hard freeze so i'll be able to put those up against my house over here let the heat radiate from the house maybe even back behind my grill and like stacked right along here and that should help protect them from any kind of frosts. Usually the south side of the house, you get some radiating heat from the side of the house. The blueberries definitely should be able to handle the frost. And then these, I mean, they're already dying back. I'm not gonna cover these tomatoes or worry about them. If they die, they die. If he dies, he dies. Don't really have much left. There's a couple fruits left, but we just got a big harvest anyway. So the nice thing is it is a light frost, but it's only one night. And then for two more weeks, we're not getting any chance of any dip in temperature, nothing near freezing, all in the 40s at the lowest at night and still 70s in the day. So I really do not worry about these ripening. I should get a full ripen off of, you know, the vast majority of these tomatoes. So that's real good. Even some of the smaller of the beef steaks should still be able to ripen. Oh, well. We are done for the day. That is exactly what I wanted to do today. A little earlier today, I also mulched this and that should help with the garlic. Garlic can handle free, uh, frosts, but it's just to kind of protect those roots and make sure that they don't go into winter mode and they stay trying to grow. Um, until we do finally get into very cold temperatures. Having a quick little frost like this is just, it's tough on the plants. It's quick and then it goes right back to summer temperatures, you know, so it can handle way colder, although they are very young carrots, so we'll see. And one other thing I wanna mention is that if you are having a frost and you have some crops that you cannot cover, like this wheat, while it handles frost just fine, I don't want the ground to freeze, which it won't. We're talking 34 degrees. We're just not gonna have that trouble, but they need water anyway. But you can do this. You can water them and just soak the ground. And the ins that'll help insulate and keep that ground from fully freezing. Last night got down to 30 degrees. It said 34, but it did actually freeze. We had some frost on some of the leaves. In fact, we still do. It's 8.30 in the morning and there's still a little bit of frost on where it's still shaded, but most of that has melted away. So I waited till now to take this cover off because I wanted to let this warm up a little bit more. It's still 38 degrees, not too cold, but I wanted to keep this nice and warm. If you guys have ever done any kind of juicing with veggies, lettuce or kale or whatever, that smell that comes from it, it's really interesting. It smells just like, like a juicing place <laughs> inside here. I don't know what that's about. Maybe the damaging of the chlorophyll and the leaves. Maybe they got damaged, I'm not sure. 
I didn't smell that last time. So last time I just pulled it off like so. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, some of this is definitely looks damaged. The leaves are wilted. Well, I mean, 30 degrees is pretty cold. You can see here, they're just, they're wilted pretty bad. Hopefully they'll bounce back, hopefully. I uncovered these and I'm gonna be honest, this looks pretty good. And same with the lemon here. Uh, they didn't look too bad damaged, so surprised with that avocado. I, I thought for sure the avocado before the tomatoes would have had issue. Now, early this morning, I will say, a lot of these leaves, like all in here, even the lettuce here, and all the radish and turnips here, those all looked really wilty and there was a lot of frost on them. But now that the sun popped up, it's warming up, they're perking back up. So maybe it was just a shock to them. Even this one looked real bad. It was all wilted down. And same with these, these still look wilted though. We'll see if those perk back up. But overall, I think I saved some stuff. Hopefully we'll keep an eye on these tomatoes here, but. Well, unfortunately, as you can see, this damage stayed. All of this is just dying back. However, a lot of the leaves on the inside are looking really good still. And I think many of these are gonna end up ripening. In fact, I've got a couple that are, that are starting here. You can see, got some color on that. Unfortunately, that one's split, but got some color on these. A lot of these dropped. The whole plant just kind of fell over here. So I lost a lot of little tomatoes, but I mean, those might not have ripened anyway. They're pretty small. They haven't grown big yet. Not like the regular large size San Marzano's. You know, one thing a friend of mine had said is it's probably because I used a plastic tarp. So the greenhouse plastic is fine as long as it's not touching, but it touched all this. I mean, all these were touching. And so you can see anything up top is dying and anything along the sides is dying, all the leaves. However, the inside looks pretty decent. He had said that probably if you're going to cover, you want to use like a cloth, something that breathes. I don't know. Um, I would have thought that something with hard plastic would have kept the heat in, but apparently it's not good for it. But everything else bounced back. I mean, these lettuces are doing as good as ever. All these, everything looks great. Almost like it never got hit. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would help me out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.